Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. And we are in Marcus Hook Anchorage. And we came in here last night. Just kind of getting everything ready to go here. Came in here last night and got alongside the ship and pumped two different products off to it. And now we're ready to go up the river to the next ship. But I've got to check to find out how far it is. Because we, instead of going and tying up the up the barge and putting the barge to, away for a couple hours or for an hour and then uh, going somewhere else I want to go and see oops press the wrong button there, there we go I want to go and go nice and slow and get to where we're going and be there right at the oops right at the right time this is roughly 14 miles away in a straight line so 16 miles. I've got an, two and a half hours to go. So I should do about, about five knots. I'll get there. We can slow down when we get there. So that's what we have to do. You got me on this one, Chief? Oh, I see you working on the ladder. He's coming up the ladder there. It's, uh, the barge is light now. Well, it's, I think it's got just a little bit of product left over. But now the Chief has a much longer way to get up into the notch because the barge has come out of the water. All right, when you're ready, start in the stern, work to the bow. Okay. So we are on the Delaware River. It's a gray day. Uh, winds are out of the south, about 10 knots. We come off the ship, turn around, we'll be inbound the Delaware and bound up for Cane Point Anchorage. Now, they're working over here. i give you a little view. You can see the guys on the ship. The chief said something funny last night. He said, when he's looking up at the guys at the ship, yeah, looking, down, down, looking down at him, he said, I feel like uh, the guys on uh, Monty Python, Quest of the yeah, Holy Grail, yeah, when the on. Frenchmen were yeah, taunting them down yeah. there. Yeah, we got <laughs> I don't know if you guys are Monty Python now, fans, yeah, but uh, certainly don't get lost on me. <laughs> All right, I got to do a little bit of house cleaning here. They don't have vts here but they do have something else and i haven't been real successful getting in touch with them in the past so let me try them philadelphia maritime tug king's point good morning tug king's point shipside in uh in marcus hook and we are made up in push gear with a double skin 30 and we're going to get underway and get up to cane point anchorage and get alongside a ship up there very good thank you so it's a little less formal it's uh not the coast guard it's the uh i believe it's the pilot association and i think that what they're doing if you guys know differently, you let me know. But what I th what I believe they're doing is that they log the shipping going in and out of the river, and the more tonnage they log, the more uh, the better their argument is to get federal funding for things like uh, dredge projects and that sort of thing. See, I'm taking in the lines there. Make a security call. 
Security call, Tug Kings Point, singling up lines, ship side, and Marcus Hook Anchorage will be coming off the ship and will be inbound up for Kane's Point. Kane Point. What am I saying Kane's Point for? All right. That's there. That's there. Everything's looking good. Tested the engines. Tested the steering. Everything's good. Three lines left to go. Now, I believe they put three different, well, I think probably two different products, but three different uh, customer loads on this barge. So that we went down and we filled up a banana ship down in uh, Wilmington with their bunkers. And we came up and we've done this one. And when I say two different products, it's usually, I didn't ask them specifically, but it's usually something like uh, two oil or, d you know, marine grade diesel. And uh, they do that for maneuvering and that sort of stuff. And then they do bunkers, which is six oil, or maybe what they call ga heavy gas oil and stuff like that. There are different things that they burn offshore. Okay, can you start working on if you like? All right, here we go. So, we easy. still have a couple of lines out, but uh, a couple of lines out, but it'll help us get them in. Understood. So that's the chief there. He's just saying that you can see the lines going soft up there. I'm just doing that, taking the tension off. We'll take those in. And what's nice about a situation like this is that the the wind and the tide are going the same way. So that the ship will be pointing into the wind and the tide. And we've had a bunch of newer viewers on, so uh, I should clear something up because I always seem to get a... <laughs> it always seems to be a bunch of people that want to tell me that uh, tide is vertical and current is horizontal and you're Come really... Up there with them, uh, another 20 feet for us, please. Come ahead, 20 more feet. And uh, they're saying, oh, what you really mean to say is current. And you know what? I think they're, those people that make that argument are technically correct, but uh, that's not how it works in our world. Um, I think that, and you know, if uh, I think if I were working on the inland waterways, I think those guys talk about current a lot more, because they don't really have to deal with tide there. But uh, all of us in this industry, I don't know one professional mariner that calls. Five, we'll have it on deck. Very good. That doesn't refer to the current as tide. Meaning, we'll say, "Look at the tide working on that buoy." Well, it's really saying, "Look at the current working on that buoy." Okay, so there's the last one. Now, if I drive, I can drive straight ahead if I want to, but... Last line's on deck, your bow is set wide. Star three wide. All right. So what I'm going to do is slowly get over. I'll show you this right over here. I'm looking at this right here. Where I'm bringing that stern over towards the ship. The bow, you can see, is coming out a little bit over there. And I want to bring this as close as I can. Now let me bring the wheel back. There we go. Because I don't really want to touch the ship. And uh, while this is happening, we're getting more and more angle up there all the time. I'm just clutch ahead one engine right here. Still maintaining about six inches off the ship. I'll give it a little bit more left wheel to keep me off of there. Now, if I were to touch the ship, it's not the end of the world. We have rubber there and all that. It's just not, it's just not cool. It's not professional. 15 on the bow. So we're gaining all the time. All right, very good. Now what I have to watch out for, okay now. Time, Tim? Yes sir, eleven oh five. Pack my copies. Okay, so looks like we're opening up over here, which is good, meaning I can put a little bit more angle on here. But the only thing that I really have to worry about, like I say, I don't really want to put the stern into the ship. Um, not the end of the world if we do, but it's not professional. But what I have to watch out for, what I what would be a little all right, is that we have to watch out for the anchor road. Sometimes the anchor road will come out like this, and if, like when you're in a place like New York, sometimes the uh, 
the anchor road, the 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 ship will be opposing the you know the will be pointed in one way, and the wind will have it pushed off at a forty five degree yeah, angle. I don't know what kind of angle their anchor is at. It looks like it's coming straight off the ship, but uh, it was, uh, it was coming up out of the water well, so it might be clear. Very good, thank you. Yeah, so the chief is just saying what he can see up there for the anchor road, because sometimes the anchor road will come right out like that, but that's usually, you can see it, they're, they're heaving it up now, um, but it's at a, it's not at a bad angle, so we're looking good. Now i got two engines in gear, and uh, it's peeling away from the ship all the time. Now i got to watch that I don't smack the ship with the stern of the tug. We're hanging around until we at least get down the road the flaw or so I'm going to swing pretty quickly. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. We can make that happen. All right, so now I got about four point nine five knots. And I am clear, just about clear of the anchor road back here. So I'm going to give it hard right wheel. I'm going to put the rudder all the way over and come right around. Now I see it. In, I see this, this. That's the guy he's talking to right up there. And if he doesn't answer him, he won't answer me. Now I'm away from the ship, I can get the radar to start transmitting. Now I'm going to go all, all stop on my uh, starboard engine and come ahead a little faster on my port engine because I don't want to run Skip out of Jack. real estate. Skip Jack. Thirty percent of our way through our turn. Still making five knots on one engine, rudder hard over. And now I'm watching my predictor line. It's coming about forty-five degrees, so the predictor line's going that way. When the predictor line goes towards the shore, I'm going to start to panic. <laughs> so I got to get the bow around before I start making progress that way. Right now, we're still making progress that way. And in fact, I'm going to put my starboard engine clutch astern just to kind of slow us down a little bit so we get more turn and less forward movement. That predictor line is now pointing almost to the corner of the ship, the end of the ship there. But uh, I'm still outside of the channel. I'm still in the anchorage. So i got plenty of room. I'm just being conservative. This tug over here sees what we're doing, so he's getting out of our way. He's a good guy. All right, she's coming around really good, so I don't have anything to panic about. Halfway through the turn, looks like we're just starting to enter the channel. Put the other engine in neutral. Let the shaft brakes work, put it ahead. Now we're uh, waiting for it to grab. It's grabbed. Now I'll bring that up to speed as well. And now we set a really... have it hooked, being hooked up on one engine. We'll just go easy on the two, on the two engines. Good ahead of us. Just I'm just on the starboard side of the channel, so my turn worked out perfectly. All happy about that. Now we can tell. We don't even have to look at. We don't have to look up here to see the what the chart says or anything. We can tell since the ship is pointed that way. That means it's pointed into the tide or the way the current is running. So now uh, 
that means we're going to have a fair current going all the way up there. So uh, that should give us good speed. The problem right now is that we don't really want to make a lot of speed because we, like I say, we need about a... Well, wait a minute. If I did, if I've got about 15 miles to go. Yeah, no, we're going to have to make a little bit more than five knots. So if we did five knots, that would be three hours, and I got two and a half hours to go. So maybe we'll go six, six and a half knots. All right, so we're getting uh, straightened out there, bringing the rudder back to zero. And you, that's the uh, Commodore Berry Bridge up ahead of us. Now, if you look here on the chart plotter, you can see the red line. That's the predictor line. We're, head, we're facing this way, but that predictor line is going to start coming over. And what that means is that we're still sliding that way, even though I'm pointed in the same direction. That line's starting to come over now. So we use that predictor line quite often. It helps us quite a bit. I get a lot of questions. A lot of people say, hey, how do I get a predictor line? Well, almost everyone has a predictor line. What they don't have that we have that makes it more obvious for us is that we have a gyro or a satellite a, a, a GPS compass, which means that we have a heading sensor. And uh, there are a lot of pleasure boats that have heading sensors as well. I use one on my, my sailboat. Uh, Garmin has a nine axis heading sensor. And the difference is, is that when the, you know, the heading sensor will show exactly which way you're pointed on the chart where the GPS or relative motion, relative bearing line will show which way you're moving. So now you can see we're aiming, this is us in the green and the red dotted line, that's us, a six minute line out there. And so it's saying that that's all, uh, we've got it all straightened out and we're going the right way. So if you don't have a heading sensor, then you, and you have a, a line in front of you, that line, if you notice, you, if you back up, even though you haven't changed your heading, that heading line will start going 180 degrees uh, the other way. And so uh, that's because it's showing your relative motion. It, it's showing your your uh, the relative bearing of, of what, what, what you're actually doing. And uh, then we set ours to six minutes. People sometimes in the comments ask why we do such a random number of six and it's actually not a random number if you've done any plotting before it'll make a lot of sense and that's because six minutes is actually a tenth of an hour so when you start plotting things out on charts it's much easier to work in tenths than it is in six in in uh in sixtieths right <laughs> Got a little boat up ahead of us, but he shouldn't be any problem. Anyway, that's about all there is to show around here. <laughs> got underway pretty much uneventful, but uh, you guys got to see something anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you guys get a chance, help me develop my other channel. Maybe you go over, throw, watch a video, or subscribe. All that helps out. That's SV Paquita. We're getting her ready. And uh, hopefully, uh, Chris Alita and I will hopefully, maybe a year from now, <laughs> head for the Azores and then over to the Mediterranean and do what they call the Atlantic Circuit. But uh, anyway, that's something else. Um, hey, if you like the video, uh, if you picked up anything, if you got anything out of it, you know, throw us a like, subscribe. If you haven't, if you have already, thank you so much. It really helps out a lot. Uh, you can always hit the super thanks, and uh, we'd love to see you on the Patreon crew. Patron, uh, patronage starts at $2 a month, and so i uh, love to have you over there. And uh, it, uh, It's kind of tangible proof that people uh, find actual value in the efforts I put into making these. So hopefully that's something you can do, um, but if not, no pressure. I get it. Just happy that you guys are watching. You guys take care. Be safe. And as always, see you on the other